Hey everyone. Well, I've got something really interesting today. I know I say that a lot, but this is really interesting. Um, first off, I'm going to say this intro is being added because for some reason the audio was cutting in and out of my other video that I shot last weekend. So I'm basically shooting a new intro, intro for it. But what we've got is a very interesting design, something I've never seen before in a drill. And when I first saw it, I think you'll agree, it, I thought it looked a lot like a paint sprayer or a paint gun. But it's not, it's a drill. And uh, you know, let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, this is a Distan Dirk model D25 kind of an odd name for a drill but um look at this thing have you ever seen a drill shaped like this look at how flat this chuck is the chuck must be mostly inside here the brushes are down here so your your motor is here and um so your motor goes up must have some type of worm gear set up or something but the trigger feels really good and locks Oh, there you go. That's much more clear distant. Um, but look at the front. How cool is that? Uh, I don't know what this does. Maybe that's reverse. I don't know. Uh, it's got something on it. Some, I don't know what it is. It's got paint. And something else that's kind of sticky. But um, an interesting design. So what I learned about this was that it's set up so that your hand and your grip is directly behind the chuck. So on a pistol grip uh, drill, your hand would be here and the chuck would be there, which kind of means you're less accurate. Whereas this, almost, um, uh, if you've ever seen the show Space 1999, their, uh, their laser guns were like that. They uh, held them this way. So anyway, that's our mission for today. I've got Edna here at the moment, a perpetually grooming Edna, here to help me out. So uh, let's get busy. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out these three screws and look at what's inside. I know I really wanna get inside this and see how this thing really works. pretty straightforward um, okay so you see pretty easy we got our neutral our hot wire I guess if it's a three-prong cable the ground would go there it's dirty these wires look decent though so a little clean out the switch looks good switch looks real good this is closer to the type of switch that should have been in the uh, US general tools that I worked on it would would have fit better all right what I've got here is a standard power cord computer power cord just gonna cut it there and strip it back a little bit how much do we need we don't need much actually if we attach here I wonder if I've got a strain relief that I can use with this uh, I'm just gonna strip back just very little like that much I may even have to trim that So to cut the outer insulation, if you've seen me do this before, don't put a lot of pressure on the handles here. You just want to drag it across uh, and then keep an eye on it and see when you go through. Not yet. Looks like we're through mostly. Okay. Oh, 
This is not the heaviest wire, but then again, I don't think this little guy uses a lot of power either. All right. Um, we're gonna need a terminal ring for that. I'll be right back. All right, I found a strain relief um, that might work be too loose for this. Uh -huh. Nope, grabs it. Okay, so we got a little bit of a strain relief that should fit in there. Uh, let's uh, strip it. have a lot of room with this. I don't know if I can use these strippers. I may not be able. I don't think I can. So we're going to be very careful here because I don't, this is all the one. Oh no, 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 that's not true. Okay. So it's wrapped around the switch a little bit. Okay. So there is a little bit more. Let's see if we can still use these because these are a lot easier to use. Be better if I could get this crimp connector just off and save that extra amount of wire. I wonder if that can be done. If I can just cut it. Anyway, all right, let's do the black first. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder black to black like that, and I'm going to have shrink tubing that I'm then going to slide over. This is uh, this piece is a little too large for that.
while that cools. Let's get a terminal ring. And since I'm using a blue, I'm going to use the blue setting on those. And okay, good. Let's put that back in. Slide our shrink tubing over these guys. All right, you're seeing this from a bit of a distance. Let me grab a close up. All right, so we've got our hot wire, our neutral wire. We've got our chassis ground wire. Oh, I've got Muggsy. I've still got Edna. Wait, Muggs. So um, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun and shrink this, and then we'll tuck this wire back under the switch. And then add my strain relief, clean up these very corroded uh, screws, and we should be able to actually test it. these guys in and I'm going to loosen this first. Looks like that looks like a pretty safe place to go. enough room now for this. Oh, look at that, perfect. And then our heat strain relief working. All right. All right, so we got these three screws that are pretty dirty. So I'm going to uh, use the wire brush and clean them up. Here's why you do it. You can see that, you got a before and an after. It's probably the before we add them. You can't really see the camera, but that's why you do it. it takes a minute. Right. 
this handle back on. Drop our screws in. Oh, I didn't clean the switch up. Okay, to clean the switch, I'm going to use CRC electrical parts cleaner. It's good stuff, just be sure before you apply power to this. It dries pretty quick, but just kind of be sure. What I do is I kind of look in here uh, at the runoff and when that's fully dry, I know I'm pretty safe to go here. All right, let's go back to here. Strain relief on cover. Snug each one up. All right, now you can go a little more. And now fully tighten. And let's check the switch. We're not plugged in, we're just checking the switch. Switch and trigger lock both work. All right, so what I'm gonna do, this uh, is a little test switch. It's on off. I'm gonna plug into the switch. Okay, and now I'm gonna put power on. Okay, nothing happened, that's a good sign. Let's, uh, this is really handy how it stands up here and uh, let's go. This is actually a really powerful drill. It puts out a lot of air from the cooling fan in there. Um, it's loud, runs great. This is handy too, or you can just set it down like that. Now, what does this switch actually do? It barely moves. doesn't change the direction. I don't know what it does. Well, it works. Let's unplug it. Uh, well, I don't know how you grease this thing. <laughs> I guess we'll, we'll uh, I want to find out what the switch is supposed to do. So um, let's take off the front. These, these screws haven't been off in a while. Well, oh, there's oil in here. These are coming out black. This may be where you can grease it or oil it. I don't see an oil port. But there is definitely oil in there.
is all a mystery to me, how this would come out. I would have expected it to just kind of come out, but it doesn't want to. The question is, is it stuck or is something else holding it, like the chuck or something? motor. Here's our rear bearing. We can oil real easy. That's definitely where the grease goes. Okay. Um, so what we can do right off the bat is we can clean the motor out and put some oil in there. And then this piece can actually go back on. So to clean the motor, I'm using WD-40 dry lube. Uh, this is not regular WD-40. Uh, if you've watched this channel, you've heard me say it a thousand times. Do not use regular WD-40 in your motors. I'm using dry lube because it's basically uh, motor lubrication and cleaner kind of by default. But it really, it will lubricate your motor. It will dry completely. So there's no fumes or anything. And um, you just let it run out. Okay. That's it for that. And now, when that's done, I can put some oil in there. Let me get my oil can. Okay, I use 30 weight or 20 weight motor oil for this sort of thing. I'm gonna put some in. this guy right back these screws here aren't all corroded so I'm not really worried about it well, there's a way this goes on and this is not it I've got it backwards so okay so there is an orientation for this I'm not quite sure why that is but there is an orientation for this that is correct. And that's why you don't just torque down your screws right off the bat. Okay, our motor's clean. We're rewired. The only thing we need to do is grease it. to do that but it had to be done it's filthy and it needs some grease in there not a lot but it needs some all right so this is out if we get the chuck out now let's see if this plate comes off yep okay oh where we go so what does this switch do uh nothing the switch this is not a switch it is some type of Vent control. All right, look at this grease. All right, let's take a look. Let's see how bad it is. Well, I've certainly, well, I've certainly seen worse. It doesn't look that bad, actually. I'm half tempted to just leave it in there. clean this 
a little bit. Well, this is going to be one of the rare cases where I'm just going to opt to keep the grease that's in it there because it's really not bad. gloves on. I'm going to wire brush the chuck while it's out. did take longer than usual to get that cleaned up because uh, it does have some burring on it. wire brush these four screws and then put it back together. back together bearings oiled didn't need to reset it but at least we know it's greased we got a new power cord uh, and let's test it again just to be sure we didn't screw anything up that is a really cool drill all right we're now in the cosmetic phase I don't think I'm going to repaint this, this orange, certainly not that, and this side I don't think I'm going to repaint that either. I think we're just going to uh, polish it up. That is so cool. step what I'm going to use is regular WD-40 and steel wool and I'm going to be careful of the 
emblems. But WD-40, not to be used in your motors or anything, or even really for lubrication in my opinion, but it's very good at cleaning these things and uh, do an initial polish because it's caustic. I don't believe this is painted. So I would always wear gloves when using steel wool like this because it will get in your skin and it's hard to get it out and it's painful. Get it pretty much cleaned with WD-40 and so um, now we're going to polish it and we're going to use my recent estate sale find which is this AJ Wholesale Polisher. And this will be the first time I'm using it. I will be wearing goggles. Curious to see how well it actually works. do the whole thing that way but I use the green which is fine and uh yeah it looks good all right that took a lot of heavy stuff off I'm gonna hand polish it now light metal polish. It's always such a challenge to get this out of can. good um, I've got a felt pad I can put on this I just need to cut around where the uh, screw holes are but I've got two options I could also use these small uh, velcro pads which I think is what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna use the uh, fabric side
fit them in like that. Let me put some stuff away and I'll be right back. All right, it's done. Um, so I figured I'd give a little bit of a visual aid on, on the logic behind why they styled it. So you held it like this, like an air sprayer. And their logic was that if you see on this Craftsman, um, where you hold the drill and where the chuck is are two diff different places, which means it's, yeah, in theory, it's a little bit more difficult to aim it and it can swing more. Whereas right here, you are legitimately holding it directly behind the chuck. <clears throat> so that's what they were thinking. It didn't catch on, obviously, because you've seen most drills look like this now and very few, if any, still retain this design, other than the world famous now, Diston Dirk Model D25. All right, that's it. What an interesting drill this was. I've never seen anything like it. Certainly never thought I would work on something like this. Um, very fascinating design, really, really is. It, it didn't catch on, but I understand the logic behind it. It makes sense. Um, for the homeowner, you know, back in the 60s or so when this thing was made, it was probably a pretty pretty alien looking drill. And so they basically went to the, the uh, regular handgun styles like most people did. But, um, you know, certainly an interesting project to work on, certainly a lot of fun to work on it. And it's useful, it's back to life now. So please like and subscribe if you found this uh, video entertaining, helpful, or just interesting. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. I've always got more content like this coming. And hey, if you see something like this, I've just shown you how to do it, so you can do it. Don't be intimidated. Just go out, get busy. Take care.